This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Mad Canadian will be in Cary this Thursday during the BBQ and Bingo at the OLC Shrine Cafeteria between 4 and 7. This Friday up in Tiffin at the Superior Auto over at Market Street from 12 to 4. And this Saturday from 5 to 9, back at it at the Tiffin Brewery. Again, this Saturday, 5 to 9. Be sure to check out the Mad Canadian's social media sites, Facebook and Twitter, for more information about him and his food truck. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of the Sloop Guest House is brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium, small batch, roast to order, veteran owned, hand roasted micro batch roasting company. Every single order is fresh to order because over at the Iron Bean Coffee Company, they do everything right for their customers. But it doesn't stop there. It does not stop there. They also do everything right for their suppliers, i.e., their farmers. Uh, in faraway places such as Colombia, Brazil, Uganda, Honduras, Peru, Ethiopia, Indonesia, and other far off lands. You know, they make sure that the beans are organic and that they're fair trade certified, which is so important. And they've gone and visited some of these farms. You know, they're making sure that everything's right on both ends of the supply chain, both in how they're getting the beans and how they're getting the beans to you. So support a, a veteran owned company that does everything right by going to ironbeancoffee.com. Once again, that is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. How's it going, everybody? Everyone's having a good week. It's almost the weekend here as we're releasing this. Sure. <laughs> I, I, I refuse to call Thursday, especially if they're especially if they're listening to this on a Thursday morning. Refuse to call it or refuse to call it. Almost the weekend, not with two full days ahead of you. All right. Well, we got a lot to talk about in our Know Your Enemy episode, so let's get into it, Jared. Please. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well over here. How are you doing, Jared? I have no complaints. I'm not. I mean, that's a lie. I have so many. I have so many complaints. Oh, my God. The complaints I have. But that's not what we're here to do today. We're here to. Uh, well, Kyle, what are we here to get? What are we here to do? We are here to know your enemy. The Rutgers Knights. Uh, excuse me. That is the Scarlet Knights to you. Scarlet Knights. Ooh, where did that come from? You didn't want Rutgers. to share Scarlet. Yes. And, you know, yeah, I got that whole we, we did the episode. We did a a private episode with our Patreon on when or for our Wednesday yeah. episode that we recorded. And we got to talk about the the jersey, the Scarlet jerseys and talking about the previous uh, jerseys. And it was it was a fun episode. Got to kind of rank them. So if you want to hear that episode or watch it on youtube become a patron and you get to enjoy that great episode that we had together yeah uh yeah we basically ranked all of ohio state's alternate jerseys but that's a different episode that you uh yes. may or may not have access to uh as little as three dollars a month patreon.thesloopcast.com yep rutgers coming into this game three and one coming off a a close loss to that team up north last weekend. So Rutgers here under Greg Schiano, very defensive, a very defensive team here, only letting him about 13 points a game. Yeah, um, not necessarily a high scoring uh, nor a high scored on team. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it the numbers can lie here. I mean, you look at the stats here, Jared, they're, they're averaging 34 points per game, but look at who they played. They, they played a team for the first time last weekend. They played Temple, Syracuse, and Delaware. So 
Right. And they, they, they did. 18. And they did allow Michigan to score 20 on them. And say what you want to say about Ohio State's defense right now. Uh, Ohio State's offense, is, I would say, no matter who the quarterback is, or at least no matter who the quarterback is currently on Ohio State's roster, uh, I'll take Ohio State's offense over Michigan's offense um, any any day, any freaking day. Believe me when I tell you, no matter which quarterback you dislike the most currently on Ohio State's roster, they're better than anyone that Michigan has. I promise you this. Yep. Well, to compare the offenses here, Rutgers averaging. 351 yards per game, Ohio State, 559. And that's with and that's with tougher competition too. Playing well, Minnesota, playing Oregon. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely tougher competition here. But the defense, the defensive yards, big difference there too. So yeah, we're we're going to see here. And I think I think that's what this matchup is really going to come down to is is really the the defense here. How improved has the defense gotten in essentially two weeks here? Uh, Nomad down in our chat asked if there's any update on the quarterback situation. Um, so we're recording this on a Wednesday. Let that be known uh, late on Wednesday. Um, so just so I'm time stamping this in case something breaks later. But as of right now, the the word from Ryan Day is that CJ Stroud is the starter if healthy. Now, if I may put my tinfoil hat on for a moment, if he was in fact, Kyle, simply resting for Akron, that why is his health in question? That's I'm just gonna let that I'm gonna let that hang out there. Because no, no one, uh, no one outside of the WAC can answer that question. Yep. So I'm just gonna uh, let that question to, hang out there. Yeah. Let's get to know Rutgers here. Rutgers, uh, leading onto the field is quarterback Noah. Is Noah Federal? Federal? Yep. Sorry. Federal. Um, scrolled too far here. <laughs> Noah Federal here, pretty accurate passer. About what is that here? Quick math. About sixty-seven percent passing here zero interceptions thrown for the year but what this Rutgers team is known for this year for on offense is the running attack they they're known for the running and in previous years Ohio State's played Rutgers it has been Rutgers running attack that's given them a little bit of issues you look back um, last year they oh where's his name uh yeah, there was Isaiah. Isaiah ran the ball for over 100 yards against Ruck, against Ohio State. Looked pretty good. Looked pretty good overall, uh, or near 100 yards. Excuse me, near 100 yards. It looked pretty, pretty good at running the ball. So that's going to be that's going to be a key factor in my mind, just because of the amount of rushing yards Ohio State has let up in the bigger games, Oregon, Minnesota. Let's see how Ohio State does against a um, another good running back here. I I mean, let's not overhype him, Kyle. I mean, did he perform well against Ohio State last year? Yeah, um, but he's he's averaging four yards a carry, which again, you've already commented on the level of competition that Rutgers has played to this point. Um, considering they've only played one formidable opponent. Um, I, I, I would like to see if I'm going to consider this guy a threat, I'd like to see a much higher average than four yards a carry, uh, none of their running backs. Um, of course they've really only give significant carries to one other guy, uh, and he's at 3.3. I I'm just, I'm not that worried about it, to be honest with you. Um, is it now I'm not and again, I'm not I'm not saying anything bad about this running back in particular. I've not watched Rutgers in enough detail. I, I did watch a good bit of the Michigan game. I watched all of the Michigan game. Um, but what is happening here? Is it an offensive line issue? Is it a running back issue? Is it a scheme issue? Um, is it a the quarterback isn't posing a big enough threat? So they're loading up the box to stop the running back issue. 
Um, I again, I've, from like whistle to whistle, the only game of theirs I've watched is is against Michigan. So I, I can't really say for sure. Um, but if I'm I'm just I'm not going into this fearing the running game. And I say yeah, that yeah, knowing yeah. that Ohio State has had issues against the running game in recent weeks um, and, and their offensive line. And I get that sometimes an offensive line can be good at pass blocking and not good at run blocking or vice versa. But it is worth noting that they've only allowed five sacks on the year. You know, the, yeah, and, and this with two two freshmen on that line too. look at that right side there, both the right guard and the right tackle are true freshmen. Yeah, uh, it's again, it's it is it is what it is. Because, again, we get into the conversation of, oh, they've only allowed five sacks. That's fantastic. OK, but Temple and Delaware and was it Delaware? Was that there? It wasn't Delaware, was it? It was it Delaware. It was Delaware. So, again, consider the competition. Again, consider, again, consider, again, consider. Um, one of the problems you have with Rutgers and trying to evaluate Rutgers is exactly what we're talking about right now is that they've played one legitimate opponent. That's that you have one thing to go on. And quite frankly, we're not even sure at this point how good Michigan really is, because, if, again, if you look through Michigan's schedule, it, it it's not like they've played anyone who you're Western Michigan, Washington. And Washington, I get, was supposed to be a good game. No slight on Michigan there. That should have been a good game. Washington's no good this year. Then they played another Mac school in NIU, and then they played Rutgers. So what you had with Michigan playing Rutgers is two completely unknown entities playing each other. Makes the evaluation incredibly hard in trying to figure out if anyone is any good or not. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, as well on this offense, I'm not really too worried. They're wide receivers. I feel like that from what I've seen in recent weeks, I, I feel like that our corners can handle the wide receivers for, for this team. Uh, their, their main threat, Bo Melton has had 24 catches for 253 and two touchdowns here. I Averaging over a 10 of, a catch. I, yeah. I, I just don't see a threat here with the, with this wide receiver or here. So what Rutgers is going to have to do with a lot of teams that try to beat Ohio state is possess the ball run successfully on the ground there and hold on to the ball and, and reduce the number of possessions that Ohio state can have here. Yeah. And as far as Bo Melton goes, he's by far the favorite receiver on the team um, has 10 more carries or excuse me, receptions, then the next guy uh, is the only wide receiver currently with multiple touchdown catches. Yep. I, I, I do no. think that Rutgers is bringing some legitimate talent to the game defensively. Offensively, I'm just not seeing anything here I'm overly afraid of. So with that being said, like, OK, Ohio State defense. This is a legitimate talent uptick from Akron because literally anyone else is. But th this is still a defense who, if you're executing properly, if you're executing properly, should not score more than 14 points on you. And I'm when I say 14, I'm including some BS touchdown at the end of the game scored against the backups. That's what I'm including. Um, Nomad said the defensive ends can contain, the defensive tackles can feast. Uh, Vedral's no threat to run the ball. Um, he's 117 yards on 33 carries this year. So he does, he does run it, but it's, it's not, there's nothing threatening about the way he runs. His longest run to this point has been 15 yards. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, like you were saying here, good transition going to the defensive side here. Yeah. Defense. This, this is a good defense, not saying it's elite, not saying it's great, but it's a, it's a pretty darn good defense here. Um, 
they've, I mean, they, they've held teams again, three of them, not great competition, but still taking care of business, averaging 13 and a half points per game led on, <coughs> excuse me, led on the field by their, um, by their uh, senior linebacker, um, Ula Kunle Batukasi. I think that's how you say it. It was pretty good. That was pretty good. I was waiting Ula for Kunle you, and you got there, Batukasi. and I'm proud of you. That, by, <laughs> by our low standards of pronouncing names, Kyle, that, that wasn't bad. Ula Kunle Batukasi. I'll, I'll go with that. Uh, see, the senior uh, Will linebacker from this team, Leads the team in tackles, leads the team, I believe, in sacks as well, tackles for loss. Uh, definitely the heart and soul of this team here. So that's the player that uh, definitely got to watch, watch out for. Uh, they, also have another, they also have another good linebacker that we're familiar with. We've, we've seen him um, play for uh, quite a while as well. Their middle linebacker, uh, Aishin Fogg, too. Another linebacker that Ohio State fans know of um, uh, over the past few years here too. So definitely a very experienced linebacking crew that Rutgers has this year. And I would also say, uh, yeah, Fatu Kasi, I think is the, I'm not, I, I think he's the premier, he's the target here. He's, he's, he's the guy on this defense for sure. Um, again, as Kyle's already pointed out, he's a linebacker, uh, leads the team by far in solo tackles, leads the team by far in assisted tackles, leads the team by far in total tackles, leads the team, not by far, but leads the team in sacks. This is the guy. Uh, he also has a forced fumble on the year already. Uh, it, it starts. It doesn't end, but it does start. The defense starts with Fatu Kasi. Um, it's it, he's I, he's an NFL bound guy, in my opinion, and I'm not going to make some sort of broad generalization that he's the only and uh, that's not true. There's some other guys here who who have potential, but is, is if you're going to put money on any one guy ending up in the NFL from this Rutgers defense, uh, he's certainly the guy. Yeah. I mean, you look at look at last weekend's game against against Michigan. They held Michigan to 112 rushing yards on 38 attempts, under yeah. three yards a carry. It, it, this can be a a battle for Henderson and Chop and Teague to get things going here, especially from what we've seen exactly, this Buckeye year. Zach. Especially this year when Buckeyes have been slow getting out of the gates to start the game here, that, that could be an issue here. It could be not, not saying it will, but it can be an issue. What we've seen so far this year, including the Akron game started off slow, finally got the wheels going and the offense looked, looked much, much better. Okay, Kyle. Uh, I think that's a great intro into Rutgers. I think we need to get into our game predictions before we get into our game predictions. I think uh, our bearded friend with the food truck uh, is owed a little bit of time. Yes, yes. Our good friend, Mad Friends, over at the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Uh, what more can I say about the Mad Canadian? I, I read a few of the a uh, few of the uh, reviews the past couple of. Um, episodes last week and uh, the week before yeah smooth transition zach yeah <laughs> um I'll, I'll mention i'll go ahead and mention the the dates again so this thursday he'll be at the shrine cafeteria in Cary, ohio four to seven o'clock during the barbecue and bingo this friday be up in tiffin at the superior auto from noon to four that's off of market street and this saturday Five to nine, dinner time, up in Tiffin again at the Tiffin Brewery. Again, find all of that and any other tidbit information about, about the Mad Canadian's food truck at a social media. Just search the Mad Canadian BBQ or TMC BBQ and you'll find his information. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, we're the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. 
This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is, I already did all that, the Ohio-based Marine-owned integrity, yada, yada, yada. We, we get it. They're great people doing great things and producing a great product. Now, but you might be thinking to yourself, Jared, uh, how do I know, they have so many different coffees, how do I know which one I, I, I can get? Well, I'm here to tell you that they have a sampler bag. It's called the Whole Shebang. That's right, it's called the Whole Shebang. Uh, for $25, and you can get this either whole bean or ground, you can get two, uh, you can get a 12 pack of two and a half ounce bags that includes a wide variety of their non flavored coffees. So you get a sampler bag of the Fear No Evil, the Fierce, the Integrity, the Drink from the Skull of Your Enemy, Odin, Dark Rocco, Thor. The regular Rocco, Ride or Die, Cast Iron, Rage Against the Dying of the Light, and the Loki. You get all of that for one low, low price. So uh, uh, it makes over 64 ounces of coffee. I think I already said it, but you can get those bags either whole bean, so you can grind them yourself to make it even more fresh than it already is. But if you're not into that, you can also get it ground. Um, actually, uh, it looks like the ground as of this exact second is out of stock. But maybe next week the ground will be there. But right now they have the whole bean. The whole bean's available. Uh, and you can buy your very own whole shebang over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. Nomad, if I have anything to say about it, yes, you will. Of course, it also probably depends upon when that next is. All right, Kyle, it's time to get our predictions in for this episode. Um, in this section of the show, now that we know our enemy, we're going to make some predictions based off of the Ohio State game. Um, our first prediction, Kyle, is the Ohio State player to watch. Who is the key player for Ohio State? Well, as I was stating earlier, um, I, it is my belief that Rutgers, I, I just can't see, especially with all that youth in the offensive line, that them only allowing five sacks a game is honest. Like, is, is that them being that good or is that the level of the competition? I have to think it's the level of the competition. We saw the defensive line get disruptive last week. Again, though, level of competition, it was Akron. But if Ohio State wants to have success in the defense, they have to continue to get disruption from their defensive line. Therefore, I'm going I'm going with the guy who should be the premier pass rusher on this football team, Zachary Harrison, Ohio State player to watch. OK, OK, I think. I think with Ohio State going to have I'm not going to say they're going to struggle, but they're going to have issues running the ball here. I think they're going to have to rely on that talented wide receiver core uh, in this game here. So I'm going to go with. No, not going to go with Olave. No, I'm not going to go with Wilson. I'm going to go with Jackson, Jackson Smith and Jigba in this yeah. game. Yeah, got, I, got the slot. You got you got the slot receiver that all the focus is on. Wilson on Olave. Jason has been creeping up on being just a lot of people really recognizing who he is now, and when they're trying to guard Olave, trying to guard Wilson, all that focus on them that leaves Jason wide open and he's he's been having a lot of success in these past few games yeah i think um with stroud maybe struggling a bit with his confidence and then getting two young guys in there last week uh getting the ball to the slot player does tend to be a little bit easier than getting it outside so i i think that's uh an astute pick kyle um enemy player to watch here I'm going to go with the name that I struggled to pronounce here. Ula Kunle Fatu Kasi, the, the, the senior linebacker who's leading this defense here. He's, he's a heart, like I mentioned before, heart and soul of this defense. And if Rucker's going to win, it's because he has, he had a big game and made big plays. Just for the record, Kyle has the correct answer here. I just wanted to pick someone different, but Kyle has the correct answer here. Um, but I wanted to go on the offensive side of the ball. I want Ohio State to remain dominant like we saw last week against higher competition that they're playing this week. 
And I think one of the ways you do that is by pressuring the quarterback. And one of the ways you excel at pressuring the quarterback is taking away his favorite target. Therefore, I'm going with Bo Melton. Uh, the best, I would say certainly the best wide receiver on their team. Yep. Key matchup here. If any, if you've listened to me so far, you kind of can probably think what the key matchup for, for me it is. That's Ohio State offensive line versus that, um, that Rutgers linebackers here. That all the talent or the talent and the experience that the linebackers have here. Yeah, um, and again, I'm staying pretty much on on target as well with my predictions and everything else. I'm going with Ohio State's defensive line versus Rutgers offensive line. Those five sacks, I don't, I don't believe that's genuine. I don't believe that holds up against legitimate competition now the question is can ohio state be legitimate competition can we continue to see that disruptive play from the defensive line that we saw with akron here with or here against rutgers that's what i'm interested in seeing um can ohio state continue to be disruptive along the defensive front this is like i said certainly better competition than akron but uh, let's count the stars. I'm pretty sure Ohio State's going to come ahead. So Ohio State defensive line versus the Rutgers offensive line. And since we have another listener here, this this game at kickoff 3:30 looks like it's going to be mostly sunny, 75 degrees. There you go, Sun Card. There you go. All right. Uh, let's see here. The spread here is Ohio State by 15 and a half points. Does that seem like a lot, Jared? 15 and a half? I I think so, yeah. I do. I think it's a lot. Um again, I, I don't think I don't think Rutgers defense is as good as it looks. They've not played a good offense yet this year. I'm just gonna say it. I have no respect for Michigan's offense. I mean you, you can do a common opponent like we saw Ohio State play Akron, we saw um, Michigan play several MAC level schools that are, you know, probably better than Akron, but not by much. And you just sort of see how Michigan had to, in many ways, sort of methodically drive the ball against, I think, some of these lesser teams. Um, I, I so with that being said, I don't think Rutgers has played an offense quite like this, and I just don't. I don't have a ton of respect for their offense, quite frankly. Um, if we go look, they've scored 61 points against Temple and they scored 45 points against Delaware, but even against the team like Syracuse, which is an ACC team and not a very, but not a very good one. They only scored 17 against Michigan, who I think does have a real solid defense. Um, scored 13. Uh, so I, I think Ohio State's going to score the amount of points that we expect Ohio State to st- score in a game like this. And I, I I expect the defense to come through not all the way. I think there are Ohio State defenses in the past who would have shut this Rutgers team out. Um, and I'm not saying that's happening this game because it's not. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to go with Ohio State to both win and cover that 15 and a half point spread. Yeah, I agree. I think I think Ohio State will cover here. Not by much. But it is a cover, though. Not I have it by to, much. Uh, are, we, are we ready? I, 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 I'll, I'll leave it in the final score here, though. But for this week's pick, or, pick Jared, who do we have? What? What? A guest picker? It's none other than... In the chat right now, our very own Buckeye Esquire down in the chat. He's our guest picker this week. Um, he says for the Ohio State Rutgers game, SHI Stadium holds about 52,000 people and will be one of those attendants. Uh, and he'll be one of those. In a, I can't read, Kyle. I'm going to try this over. I'm, I'm just starting over. I'm not editing any of this out. I'm just starting over. SHI. Stadium holds about 52,000 people, and I will be one of those in attendance when the Buckeyes joust the Scarlet Knights. Stroud has his shoulder and 
His psyche recalibrated after getting a rest. So the Buckeyes go bombs over Virgin County. Virgin, did I say that correctly? Yes. Waiting, waiting, waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for it, Buckeye Esquire. No pressure. Virgin. I thought I said that, but maybe my Ohio snuck out. Um, County to Alave Wilson when Trey Hundo uh, isn't gashing the. The he's doing the belligerent belligerent Rutgers defense. Guys, why would you try and make me say a big word? Live on camera on microphone. Your lawyers and your lawyer words. Um, <laughs> silver bullets continue to improve, may give up some points, but I'm absolutely not scared of a man who calls his offense like Rick Moranis and Little Giants. That's that's a great reference right there. You're back in my good graces. Score 52 to 24 from Buckeye Esquire. Which, which is a total is, of 76. That point is total is very important in our online slope picks. All right, Jared. What do you have for your final score? Um, I have Ohio State winning. I have Ohio State covering. Um, and I have them winning 55 to 14. I believe Rutgers scores a touchdown in the first quarter, probably on their first or second drive. Um, and then I think Ohio State's defense pulls their head out of their collective butts. But then I think Rutgers probably also then gets a cheap touchdown in the fourth quarter, getting to your 14 points. Um, Ohio State, I feel like, scores most of their points in the second and third quarters. Yeah, no, they they absolutely do, uh, except for the. Uh, well, recently, recently, <laughs> um, I have and I, I'm probably going to get a lot of a lot of. Um, discuss comments in here i have ohio state 38 Rutgers 21 which is a cover not by much but is a cover yeah kyle that's uh hmm it's very negative of you i i think i think ohio state's going to have be again slow out of the blocks here will come out like what you said go to score points second third quarter it's going to be like 38 it's going to be 38 or 30 to to 14 going into the fourth quarter the game's almost put it away there and and how say get one more touchdown in the fourth quarter and so will rutgers to to make it look closer but how state would win this easily though but happening now in the live chat is nomad not understanding the um the reference of the annexation of Puerto Rico in reference to Little Giants. He's very confused. I oh, did you because you felt the need to point out that it was already annexed. Oh, sure you were. Sure you were, Nomad. Sure you were. <laughs> but either way, we all all three of us have a state to cover. <laughs> exactly, Buckeye Esquire. All right, let's get into some ask. Was it in loop, future tests? Ask, ask loop gas questions. Start with our Austin's over and unders. And he says, Buckeye Zach, don't touch my bit. <laughs> He's uh, very protective. Rushing, yard, rushing yards for Trey over under 124 and a half. Over. I'm going to go under. They're actually going to need him this game if they need him to put together 25 carries he will and if he gets 25 carries i think if he gets over 15 carries he surpasses this uh i yeah i'm not i'm not that afraid of rutgers defense yeah, i'm not either there's just more running backs than just henderson he'll get he'll get most of the carries i mean look look at last week granted it was akron but they're sharing the ball a lot. I don't think he will get to the 124 and a half yard mark here. I close, I, but no. I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to get one on you here. That's all I'm saying. All right. Completions for Rutgers passes over under 21 and a half. Uh, as stated under. previously, Federal 
uh, has, hey, it's almost like Austin knows what he's doing with these numbers sometimes. Uh, 76 completions on the year. Rutgers as a total has 79. Um, so uh, I'm going to say over. And the reason I'm going to say over isn't because I think those completions will necessarily be easy or whatever else. I just think Rutgers is going to have to throw the ball a lot because I think they're going to go down fairly early. And I also think that they're not going to find much success on the ground. Um, maybe Ohio State can defend a lot of those, but also maybe a lot of them are junk passes. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to go. I'm going to go over simply out of r the desperation that, that Rutgers is going to find themselves in needing to throw the ball. Okay. Total yards allowed by Ohio State's defense, 371 and a half. I'm going to go over. As much as I want this to be under, I'm going to go over. I'm going to go under. I really don't like this Rutgers offense. I like Rutgers defense a lot more than I like Rutgers offense. I'm going to go under. I think they'll be right at right around 400. I like that over under. Uh, if, you, if you said about 285, I might have said under, but I think they'll get close to that uh, 400 mark there. Catches by Olave and Wilson at 10 and a half. I think a lot of that depends upon who's playing. Because um, I think Stroud is more likely to get the ball out to them than maybe McCord would be. Um, but I'm going to go over. I think Olave needs he's he's in a bit of a slump. Um, but I think once again, like with with Trey, they're actually going to need Olave this game where they definitely didn't need him last game. Um, so they're going to need him a little bit more. Wilson's still been getting his. I'm going to go over. Yeah, I'll go over. I, I think I think we'll see more out of uh, Olave in this game here. So I'll I'll go with over. Ohio State defensive turnovers forced two and a half. I'm going to go under go, just because I never would never just three is always a big number to expect turnover wise. Yes. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go under as well. Ohio State sacks at three and a half. I'm going to go under as I'm going to go under as well. I think I think three is a good number. So I'm going to stick with three that Ohio State would have. So I'll go under. I'm going to go. I'm going to go over, but it's but I think three, three and I think three and a half is probably the correct is a real good placement of that over under, but I think I'm going to go over. Receiving touchdowns by Ohio state wide receivers. GSJ counts at three and a half. Um, touchdowns by Ohio state wide receivers at three and a half. That just feels like a lot. And this kind of feels more like a Henderson game. Um, I'm just, I could also go to a tight end. Um, yeah. That's why I'm going under. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just yeah, I'm just going to go under. Yep. All right. All right. Let's get to some other questions here. Nomad. Uh Oh, number of number of trick plays Shiano uses against Ohio State. And he has it at three and a half. He's he's, he's invading in on your over under territory, Austin. Um, I'm going to go. Over, I'm going to go over. I, you know, you know go, man, it just depends upon what counts as a trick I'll play. Under. I'll go under, like trying to do four trick plays in a game. I don't know. It, it's highly dependent upon what you consider a trick play. That's all. Forward pass is a trick play. I mean, you go <laughs> back a few decades, it was. Yeah. All right. Kabuto asks Is Zach Harrison closer to a bust or the opposite of that? Not sure what you call it. Um, <sighs> I think Zach Harrison's been dealing with a lot of injury issues, um, maybe notably his back. Um, and I don't think that's allowed him to get to his full potential yet. Uh, and while we certainly had him pegged as a three and out sort of player, um, maybe those back injuries brings him back for a fourth year. I it's it's just it's it's hard to say. And it also highly depends upon how he ends the year. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm not, no, I'm not, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to use that word on him yeah, by any means. Not yet. Yeah, now, has he either. to this point lived up to the expectations? No, I don't think he has, but 
Injuries are injuries. Yep. All right. Buckeye Zach here has a few questions for us, Jared. Does the Buckeye freshman revolution mean we are back in business? Does McCord start against Rutgers or will Stroud return? Um, I, I think defensively, I think it really does mean that. I think we're going to see a lot more. You know, Burke is basically a stud starter veteran at this point. Uh, JTT could start this game for all I know. Uh, I, I don't know, but he very well could. Um, yeah, it's. I'm I'm all for the the revolution on the defensive side. As far as McCord goes, I don't know. I uh, there's a lot of secrecy happening within the program, and I'm just not I'm not going there. Yeah, Sawyer as well. Yep. I mean, you, I mean, you, if you add and Ty Leak, um, JT Tuimolau, and Henderson, that's three right there. That's that's three like pretty much guaranteed starters. Well, I was talking strictly on the defensive side, but yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. JT Tuomalau got the call last week. Do we ever see Sawyer start this season or is he good with where he is on the rotation? Uh, I would say a, a lot. I don't know that he starts. I don't know that JTT starts if the defensive line is 100% healthy, which it was not 100% healthy and available last week. Um, so I, maybe it just depends upon who is out. Um, uh, I, I don't know. I, I think it's entirely possible you see JTT start at some point this year, especially just because injuries are a thing. And I would at this point expect him to be in the top five, six defensive ends on the team. And I'm including both sides when I say that. All right, last question we have from Buckeye Zach. Burke, Hickman, Watts, and McCall. Would this be a good backfield against the trickster caller known as Greg Schiano? Um, I, I don't know. Uh, McCall is not a starting defensive back. We saw him play a lot last week because it was Akron and it was late in the game. Um, but Burke and Hickman have certainly been getting their reps and they're two guys who I want to see on the field as much as possible. Ryan Watts isn't quite there yet. Um, I think Ryan Watts has a bright future at Ohio State. I don't think he's quite there yet. That's that's my that's my answer. Mm -hmm. I will tell you, well, I think I think someone in our um, in our discord posted this. The call has had pretty good success against Rutgers. In his history here at Ohio State, the past uh, 10 years, he's been here. Cool. <laughs> this isn't uh, that Rutgers and this isn't that McCall. All right. Um Esquire asks, we getting everybody back this week? No. No. That's that that's all I'm saying is no. That's that's yeah, my exactly. entire answer. If McCall gets a pick six, our whole Discord will be just We'll crash. Yeah, it'll be crashed. <laughs> Not our Discord server, all of Discord. We will we'll, we'll crash all of it if that happens. Yeah. All right. That's all the questions we have. Jared, go ahead and take us out. All right. Uh, yeah, everyone, please. Well, there's don't don't worry, people in the chat. We have a second episode to do. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, visit visit all the stuff. I, I I don't know. I was about to say something, but I lost it. Uh, Patreon.thesloopcast.com. Uh, you get access to all of our digital content, including the live game watch. Kyle, what's the what's the social screen this week? Did we even decide? Yeah, we voted uh, on it. I'm just forgetting. Uh, chat, what's the social screen this week? But anyway, we do a social screen every week with... Um, where we just sort of get together and watch an Ohio or not the Ohio state game. we watch a different game. Um, and then we, 
Uh, we do that every week. Uh, there's a bonus episode on Wednesdays you can listen to. That's how you, another way to get access. And uh, you get early access to episodes. You can listen live as we record down with these psychos here at the bottom of the YouTube screen who we've been talking to. So all of that digital access you that that's all for three dollars a month. There are higher tiers that get you like physical things. But if you're interested in any of the digital access again, uh, like, for example, premium sections within the discord server. Three dollars a month, that's all it is, and it's a bunch of cool stuff. Uh, we've done our best to make that three dollars well worth your money. Um, and if you just want to come hang out in the discord server, but you don't necessarily but you don't have money to spend or um, Maybe you just want to test it before you buy it. Uh, you can also do that. Uh, just come hang out at the Discord server. Most of the channels are free. Most of the channels are free. Uh, just download Discord to your phone. It's just an app. And then you can just go to um, discord.thesloopcast.com and, and join our, our merry band of mischievous musketeers. I was on a Name thing again. there. Our shenanigan crew. I was I was on I was on an emerald there. I had to keep going. Uh, so there's there's a there's a late push in, in the in the chat right now where they want to watch Hawaii versus UNLV. That was not one of the options. Kyle, anything in Kyle's no, corner to watch some Tate to watch some Tate in. Um, the our social screening for this weekend. It was close. It is going to be Indiana, Penn State, Boston College and Clemson was a close second. They're both on at the same time. I could, in theory, throw them both up. Yeah. But, all right, uh, Kyle's Corner, um, basketball news? Yes. We got a basketball boom. We got a basketball boom, everybody. Bryce Sentabaugh from uh, Orlando, Florida. Uh, he is the, according to the composite, he is the 75th best overall um, prospect, and he is the 21st best shooting forward in the country this moves ohio state up to currently to the second best recruiting class in basketball yes we're not talking about football here talk about basketball where ohio state is the second best recruiting class right now and i think three of their four commits that they currently have are in the top hundred so so holtman's holtman's doing his thing right now awesome uh kyle that's the end of today's episode um, I wanted to talk about that, but we're, we're pushing 50. So we need to get the hell out of here. Um, tonight's ending music will be brought to you by a punk band from the Columbus area called Parade Rainer. Uh, you can, uh, for the audio listeners, you can stick around and hear that song up next. If you are a YouTube watcher, there'll be a link down in the description. You can click on that and, and listen. Um, so with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Parade Rainer.